you know, we're kind of just fishing the conditions in the sense that, you know, we've been out here the last couple of days and we've been throwing a lot of swim baits, a lot of shallow running cranks. Water temperature dropped about four degrees, a little bit of a front that came through, kind of a cold wind. We made a few passes through the swim baits, you know, just not a touch where we, where we were catching fish. And so we're just making an adjustment, just fishing the day. And so a lot of times, especially where you know there's fish, and just the conditions are kind of tough where these fish just aren't responding to some of those faster presentations, you can hunker down and sit in these spots with a slip bobber and catch fish. And so slip bobbers aren't a good way to find fish in the sense that it's hard to cover water. You gotta be real meticulous and pick your spots. But if you know where there's fish, you put a just a plain hook and a leech and just let it sit in front of fish. It's just too much for them to resist. There he is. These bobbers just disappear. Where's that bobber? Oh, right there. <laughs> there he is. Oh yeah. Those are big smallmouths anywhere. We got her. Oh yes. wow. Ah, oh, just a beautiful fish. This is incredible. <laughs> Look at that beast. <laughs> Got him? Oh yeah. Getting silly now. <laughs> Keep on doing it. <laughs> oh, good fish. I don't ever get tired of catching fish like this. Wow, that is gorgeous. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by Shields. Crestliner. North Dakota Tourism. Blackfish, Bismarck Motor Company, Salmo, Travel Manitoba, and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods. There we go. Good fish. Oh, look at there. That's a walleye. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is a sled. <laughs> Take her easy here with her. Get a net under her. That's a good fish. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at the shoulders on that fish. That is just gorgeous. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. A little bit of wind makes these slip bobbers dance. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Look at that. Ha. <laughs> look at her caught right in the corner. That hook was just barely in there. There, look at that. They what? Slip bobber in just such an effective way to catch fish. Let her go here right away. There. Right here, right here. There he is. Another good one. Ho ho ho. And bobbers just poop. <laughs> oh yeah, look at there. Oh. You see the pencil reeds up in front of us, you know, we're just fishing classic weed line walleyes. You see how dark these fish are. I like to see that. That means these fish have been in here for a while. Look at that. That is a chunk. Classic Devil's Lake weed walleye right there. Thanks for the fight. Fish took off hard. That's cool to see. Very effective, you know, and obviously you can fish slip bobbers and timber. We're fishing weed line right now, and basically where we're finding fish, at least this year right now, is just these big long flats that come out where say it's just a four to six foot flat with just tufts of weeds, clumps of weeds popping up a different place. So you can go through here and pitch it, 
but like right now, you know, these fish seem to be off a little bit, so we're just slowing down with slip bobbers. But you know, the slip bobbers only three and a half, four feet down, you know, over five, six feet of water, just so it just floats above those weeds. And, and what I like to do is early in the year, the water temperature is still cool. That's just an eighth ounce worm weight, goes to a swivel, and just a fluorocarbon snow, just a plain hook. And that weight can go up and down in the waves, but that leech will just swim underneath it. You know, I like to do that plain hook. Just hook that leech right in the middle. You put them in the water and they don't ball up as much, especially when the water's cold, those leeches just swim. Put two bobber stops on that heavier braid just so it sticks to that braid using a 14 pound power pro, just a bigger diameter of braid so that way those bobber stops stick to it. Just a great setup for fishing Devil's Lake, whether you're fishing in weeds or in wood. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. From the makers of the legendary Salmo Hornet, meet the new Salmo Freediver 9. Capable of reaching depths over 25 feet, the free diver has set the new standard for deep diving walleye crankbaits. See that free diver, that fish just, just mugged that bait. Individually handcrafted, tank tested, and tuned by Salmo artisans, every Salmo lure produces perfect action every time. Catch more fish with a new Salmo Free Diver 9. Crestliner continues to redefine aluminum hull performance with engineering and design that used to be limited to fiberglass. An all-welded aluminum hull, engineered reverse chine, work-hardened sidewalls, full-length keel, and the brand new APX hull design sets Crestliner apart from the competition. Backed by their limited lifetime warranty, now is the time to rethink aluminum. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose outerwear that works. Technical apparel. Rain gear. Soft shelves. Sunwear. When you need to stay comfortable all day, choose Blackfish, because you can't choose the weather. At Shields, we speak your language. There we go. Hit spot lock. Bring her on up. Oh yeah. Just a oh, look at that. You can't even see this jig. I'm just gonna lift this fish in here. Oh look at this. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that big soft plastic paddle tail. Fish is coming and eat it. There she goes. You know, and one thing that I do a lot on Devil's Lake is, you know, I'll spend a lot of time casting crankbaits or casting soft plastics up into shallow water. We're using a lot of the Selma walleye shads. The Northland Mimic Minnows are just a classic bait out here, but any type of a shad profile paddle tail bait works really well on Devil's Lake. Then obviously shallow running crankbaits work really well on Devil's Lake, but Sometimes when these fish are really snapping, you know, you can catch all the fish you want on, on the faster, more aggressive presentations, but I've seen it so often where maybe you get a couple of fish follow, or maybe you just catch one or two fish in an area, you know, by casting and reeling. And if you go back in those spots and sit with a slip bobber, you absolutely light them up. And so sometimes you'll use those more aggressive presentations to find fish and break down water and just sample water. But when it comes down to it, when you want to catch fish, a lot of times you'll do the most damage by just sitting where you know there's fish and using live bait. Yep, yep, yep. There he is. Oh, come on up. These bobbers just disappear. Oh yeah. Great walleye. Come on up. <laughs> I promise I'll let you go. Oh, isn't that a go gorgeous, just a gorgeous chunk. 
<laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Get her out of the net here and show her off. There. Just love how dark these fish get. Yeah, that is beautiful. You know, one thing that's been somewhat unique about this particular spring is we've just had a lot of wind, more wind than normal, and we've had a lot of cool weather. And we've seen this happen in the past, but if you can imagine Devil's Lake when it's warming up in the springtime, when that water stays cool, that water has a tendency to really clear up. Where normally good visibility on Devil's Lake might be, say, two to four feet of water, when that water clears up, when it stays cold, you know, you might be able to see down six, seven, eight feet or more, and that's unusually clear for Devil's Lake. And so when we have that clear water, it accelerates the weed growth. We'll see weeds grow out into deeper water. And so this year, even though it's been a really cold, windy spring, and these water temperatures are lagging behind, the weed growth is actually accelerated. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh yes, that's a good fish. That's a good one. Best thing to do when the bobber goes under is crank on the reel. This is a good one. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, stay hooked up. Biggest fish we've had on today. Look at that. Oh yes. I love this. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Oh. <laughs> that fish has some shoulders. Get her out of the net here and show this girl off. Look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is a nice walleye. Yeah, that is. Oh yeah, that is a gorgeous fish. And you know, one thing that's really important, try to figure this out each day. If you can imagine, these fish are just running up and down the shoreline. They're not like they're just sitting in the weed lines waiting for something to swim by. These fish are moving back and forth through here. It's almost like they're just, imagine them just swimming in a circle. They just have a zone where they're living and they're just swimming back and forth. And so the most important thing each day is to try to figure out that route that those fish are traveling on. And usually it's a distance from the shore. It's not only a depth, but it's a distance from the shore as far as figuring out that contour. So starting out, I'll stagger the slip bobbers a little bit, but once I figure out that those fish are passing through, then I'll just hustle and just, you know, just keep those bobbers in that zone. And that's the key to catching fish on slip bobbers, in my opinion, whether you're fishing a contour where there's wood or a weed flat, any type of a contour, there, there's an edge that those fish are following. And so distance from the shore, distance from the contour, once you figure that out, it's almost like being a, a, a deer hunter sitting in a tree stand waiting for deer to pass by. You gotta be sitting on a trail. And so find that trail. Where's that bobber? Oh, right there. <laughs> oh, there's another good one. Let's see how that rock. Oh, wow. These fish are so strong. There we go. That's cool. They're just such an effective Effective tactic. There. It's a gorgeous walleye. Let her in the water here. There, see you later. I've got the talon down and we're in about seven feet of water. And you know, a lot of times, you know, you've got all kinds of weeds coming up off the bottom and 
So anyway, the type of weed that we're finding fish are on right now is just that stringy grass weed. But with that being said, you have to have that leech set up, you know, where it just floats over the tops of the weeds. And so a lot of times, you know, you know, you might have a, one, say one bobber stop at five feet, one bobber stop at four feet. Use your body to measure the, the slip bobber. So if you catch a couple fish on a slip bobber, check your other slip bobbers, just make sure that that bobber stops right at the same depth, just so that you're just getting that right zone, that right depth where you just, you know, you're just barely coming over the tops of those weeds. And, you know, these fish are just running these weed lines just a, an effective tactic. They really catch fish on Devil's Lake for a, you know, a big chunk of the summer. Wow. This is a good one too. Get this other rod out of my way here. You notice I'm not putting the rods in the rod holders. I just like to lay them on the gunnel of the boat just so I can grab them easier and quicker. Oh, oh, oh that's a good fish too. These are just gorgeous walleyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That's why people come to Devil's Lake. Just a tremendous, tremendous fishery. People ask all the time, is Devil's Lake better or worse than it was, say, five years ago, 10 years ago? When I first started guiding on this lake, the walleye fishing was incredible. And it's still incredible. Yeah, just a chunk. Gorgeous. There she goes. You can kind of see a little bit of breeze. You know, I guess, you know, maybe one thing to point out too, you know, as far as when we settle in this spot, is we drove around the lake a little bit, we're up in Pelican. And so it's a bay where there's all kinds of small bays inside of it. And we basically just spent a little bit of time just trying to find pockets of that warmer water. And so we found pockets where water temperature is 64 degrees, 65 degrees, came back in here, winds pushing, we're in a protected area in a protected bay, water's a little bit warmer back in here, and some 67 degree water's getting pushed up along the shoreline. So that's why we settled into this spot and so you know first half of the summer especially you know look for stain in the water and look for water temps and a lot of times that'll help fine tune as far as just finding fish that want to play fish that cooperate so just hooking that leech right in the middle you know you got a sucker in and a nose in kind of stay away from that nose end or the, you'll kill them just like that these fish you put it in the water and just look at how it, it just swims So right now we're just using a plain hook and sometimes we'll put a few beads on it. I like to use a plain hook a lot early in the year and then I'll, I'll hook that leech right in the middle, but get later on in the summer, especially that water warms up and I'll, I'll switch over to jigs a lot more. So this is just a small fireball jig with that wide gap. You know, we just hook that leech right through the sucker, especially when this water stains up, you know, just a little bit of color, just a little bit of attractant can make a big difference. And one thing that I really like to do later on this summer is just use these little whistler jigs. And again, you know, just hooking a leech right through the sucker on the hook or just even using a half crawler. But especially later on in the summer, you get wind like this and just that, that blade will just spin as that jig goes up and down the water. And so later on in the summer, I'm using a lot more jigs early in the spring through early summer. I'm using a lot more of a plain hook, but uh, Slip bobber is just a very versatile tool to catch fish here on Devil's Lake. You know, obviously slip bobbers are popular on a lot of different fisheries. They just work so well. And what's interesting is that when you go to different bodies of water, different fisheries, you know, there'll be different nuances to fishing slip bobbers in the sense that a lot of times on Devil's Lake, we're anchoring in key areas. And a lot of times it's either timber, wood, or weed lines, pencil reeds, cabbage, whatever type of vegetation it is, and we're just probing those spots with slip bobbers. We go over to Mille Lacs, for example, and it's a lot more aggressive run and gun style fishing where we're trying to mark fish on our electronics. We're actually lobbing the slip bobber out and trying to put that slip bobber right where we mark a fish. And so obviously in Minnesota, you can only use one line, and so maybe that more aggressive style of using slip bobbers is more conductive to a one rod state, but Slip bobbers simply catch fish, it seems like, on so many different bodies of water because let's face it, you put a leech in front of a fish and let it sit in front of them, there's not too many fish that can resist that. It's all about putting good bait in front of the fish. 
Here he is. Another good one. This fish is strong. Look at that. <laughs> fish don't like captivity. <laughs> Look at that. People say, oh, walleyes don't fight. Well, come and do this. These fish are so strong. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Get a, get a bath out of the deal, too. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never gets old. I don't know what it is about bobbers, but it's just like being a little kid again when they watch them slam down. That's probably 21 inch fish, but just look how chunky. I mean, just how thick, solid these fish are. Yeah, good stuff. Tell you what, when I was guiding, especially, you know, it was just something I did a lot because just something easy to do. Put the anchor out, put the talon down, and your hands are free. You know, you can visit with people, and and you know, if bobber goes under, you get to set the hook. Fish fight hard, and you just catch a lot of fish. That's what people love about this. And I tell you what, Devil's Lake is a phenomenal fishery for slip bobbers. But you look at Winnebago, where you can use three rods. Even places like Mille Lacs, there's a lot of places. You know, in South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, where Whenever you find fish in flooded timber, which is somewhat unusual, or weed lines, which is pretty common on a lot of natural lakes, slip bobber and a leech is just a deadly combination. There he is. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> wow, that's a good fish. <laughs> oh yeah, come here. Look at that, that is a, that is a walleye. Come on up here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that might be the biggest one yet of the day. Yeah, these are just gorgeous fish. But look at that, that fish is all of 27 inches. That is just gorgeous, those big old teeth. Yeah, that is just a great way to wrap up the day. But tell you what, this will work most of the summer. I mean, it's, you know, middle of June here right now, early to middle of June, this will work, you know, through the summer because these walleyes will live in the weeds most of the summer. And so just an effective tactic, you can come out here and do this with kids, do this beginning anglers. And I tell you what, I don't care how old you are, I don't care how many fish you've caught, everybody loves to watch a bobber go under. Let's get this fish in the water. Awesome.